I'm Owen Bigland. This is the Inside Edge video blog. Okay, time for my much anticipated 2019 market uh, forecast. Every year I've been doing this for the past eight years. Uh, and every year I always throw my little disclaimer in right at the beginning here. Uh, I do not have a magic crystal ball. Uh, nobody does, even though you'll see people on YouTube and in the paper and on, on, uh, on the news that seem to have some magic crystal ball that uh, they can predict what the Vancouver real estate market is going to do when they don't. They're just taking guesses. When you think about it, you got it's a coin toss. You've got a 50-50 shot at it. I really have no clue. Uh, I'll, as I'll get to in a minute, I can kind of tell you where maybe things might go. Uh, I'll kind of give you, you know, what some of these jokers that are out there right now with their big bold predictions, they're really going out on a limb these days, aren't they? When you've had an eight year bull run like this, well, you know, the law of average eventually catches up to you and we're going to get a down market. So I have no crystal ball, you know, the way it's going right now, the Fed in the US, as I speak in, in the winter now, 2019, they've become much more dovish on their interest rate hikes. And it sounds like the Bank of Canada now has backed off on three or four interest rate hikes for 2019. So it'll be interesting to see. Interest rates are really what drives this market. Uh, as we've started to see some more interest rate hikes, of course, that puts a bucket of cold water on the real estate market. And uh, if we don't get uh, as many interest rate hikes, well, then that will probably uh, start to have a, a not as big of an effect on prices and the downward pressure on prices moving forward. But just a little caveat here. I'm going to go on a little rant here for a minute. So we all know everyone in, over the last couple of months has been coming out with their predictions. These guys come out of the woodwork, out of their parents' basement. They all think they're experts. Yet when you really look at these people, many of them don't have a whole lot of experience. They're, they're not very uh, transparent, I find, where a lot of the stuff I see on the news, on the radio, on YouTube, what is the background of some of these people? So with me, I've always put it right out there. I've got over 30 years experience in Vancouver real estate. Uh, I've been around the block a few times. I've been through so many bull markets and bear markets, I've lost count. They all kind of start to look the same. They all kind of play the same kind of characteristics after a while, which I'll get into here in a minute. But, you know, of course, we've had these guys that have been calling for a Vancouver correction for five, six, seven, eight years. Some of these guys were calling for it 20 years ago. You know, they scream from the top of the mountain that, you know, we're headed in for a big correction and this is the big one. And then when it doesn't happen, they just quietly disappear and crawl back into their hole. There's never any accountability for any of these guys because they don't have any credibility. They're just blogging from their parents' basement or from some dark rented condo someplace. And I don't know if it's their egos or what their whole story is. Many of them, they just come and go. They predict these th things 10 years ago. It doesn't happen and they quietly slink away. Then a new batch comes out and you really start to get a whole new batch of them when you get into the late innings like we are right now in the Vancouver market. Now, detach has already turned two years ago. Luxury condos, townhomes, that's turned over a year ago as well. Prices have been trending lower. Condos now, one bedroom condos downtown are just starting to level off and maybe we're seeing the early signs of some price drops here. And now this is where all the armchair quarterbacks like to pile in now because now we're in the eighth, eighth and a half inning or the seventh inning stretch Now's the time where I'm going to scream and say, I think Vancouver condo prices are going to come down. You know, it's like saying it's going to rain this winter. It's a coin toss. So I don't know what their game is. Is it something that, because they're new to this business, is it something that they're going to come back on later in the year and see, see, I told you so, jump up and down. I told you condo prices were going to go down. Look at how smart I was. You got a 50-50 shot. You've already been wrong for the last three years, some of these guys, because I followed some of them. They've been saying this for three years. When the empty homes tax came in, when the uh, foreign buyers tax came in, they were saying everything is going to go downhill, even though condos are up 40% since then. I don't know if it's an ego thing that they want to look at me and look at how smart I was back then because I predicted that it, that it was going to come down. I don't get it. But moving into 2019, it would be very easy for me to say here, if I was a betting man, which I'm not, we're in the eighth inning, interest rates have been creeping up, we've got buyer fatigue, which eventually settles in. You know, 
eventually these markets cool, which I've been saying for four years. So what do you want me to say here? Maybe I could say this year, you know what? I think condos are uh, uh, in Vancouver, downtown condos, one bedrooms, two bedrooms are gonna drop 5% this year. I'll put it out there. Why not? And then at the end of this year, I'll come back so I can toot my own horn here and say, see, I told you the prices were gonna come off. Who cares? And these guys should, these rookies and newbies and armchair quarterbacks, nobody's gonna care. Calling for a, a market correction now is like saying, again, it's gonna rain. You've already been wrong three or four years. Eventually, it's like a, you know, it's like a broken clock. Eventually, you'll get it right sometime. But for the life of me, I, you know, I don't understand what these guys get out of these predictions. Nobody really knows. Anyone that tries to tell you where the market's gonna go is just guessing. I've got 30 years on these guys and I'm telling you that I don't know either. For all I know, you never know. The condo market could tread water here for a couple of months and then go up 5% for the year. Who knows? But again, who cares? If you watch my blog earlier about the three types of buyers, principal residence, an investor, or you're a flipper. The only one that really should care about what the market does in the short term is a flipper. And if you're a flipper in this market, you have no clue what you're doing. You're in the wrong market right now for flipping. All my flipping guys are on the sidelines. Too much uncertainty. They'll wait till the NDP government gets out and we get some more interest rate clarity and, and a bunch of other stuff here on the taxes. But where do I see the market going? So we gotta break it down into, when everyone says, how's the market going? I've talked about this many times. What market are you talking about? Are you talking about condos? Are you talking about one bedroom studios, three bedroom luxury condos in, in Coal Harbor? Are you talking luxury townhouses in Kits or a luxury townhouse in, or a townhouse out in Langley? Are you talking detached or attached? It, it's all over the road. It depends on the product the price point and the city. But I'll keep it simple for here. Let's talk Vancouver, Burnaby, Richmond, we can throw in there as well. So the two closest uh, uh, suburbs. I think for condos, uh, we're seeing early signs of the market starting to level off. We've I've been saying for many years now, eventually we're gonna get a run of the mill correction. I think maybe condos might come off 5% this year, kind of tread water. The ones that'll get hit a little bit more than that though, which I've always talked about, are the dog units. The good quality units you're gonna see are gonna stand up very well. And I wouldn't be surprised at all if some of these really good buildings, good stratas, good one beds that I follow, barely come off in price at all. They haven't yet. We'll see what the, and I'll give you guys updates as the year goes on. I just report from the front lines here. Again, I have no real idea here exactly where anything's going. I'm just speaking in broad terms here. But what will get hit when you get into a market that's kind of slowing, prices kind of slowly, gradually running down, buyer fatigue, inventory, which I'll talk about in a minute, is kind of wishy-washy right now. It hasn't really gone up a lot. The dog units, though, that I've talked about many, many times, the location, 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 these units that are hugging up on bridges, bad locations, noisy, bad floor plans, bad stratas, issues in the strata, those are the ones, the first ones you're gonna see that are gonna get slashed. Hasn't come yet, but before the good ones, any problems come on in the general market, you'll see the dog units start to get slashed because they can't sell them. Only way you can sell them is to slash the price because you're competing against some much better units out there. That's the thing. Buyers have got more, more uh, options now and more time on their hands. Before it was all bidding wars. So we'll see where the condo market goes. The luxury stuff has already been sliding a little bit here. I could see that probably trending a bit lower here. So this is stuff over $2 million. Uh, we'll see where that goes. Now, as far as inventory goes, I know everyone's thinking, oh, inventory skyrocketing. Actually, that's not quite the case yet. As expected in December, we had a big drop off in inventory. Very little was listed because I don't list anything in December unless I have to unless it's an estate sale or a trustee sale that I do a lot of work with, they list when they list. I don't have any say over it. But for my other clients, I, we wait until after New Year and that's exactly what happened. I've rolled out four new listings so far uh, early in the new year here. I've got a couple more coming out. As a matter of fact, I took two listings off the market in December. One, 
weren't getting the action on it we wanted. My guy ended up having a, a, a tenant step up, a real good quality tenant, and we decided take it off the market, rent it out for another year, and we'll revisit it next year, which is cool. The other one I'm gonna relist here in February. So I actually took a couple listings off and I noticed many listings were either terminated or expired in December. The next couple of months will tell a story here. We'll see where the inventory goes, but for right now, it's not huge. Do yourself a favor if you don't believe me. <laughs> go into realtor.ca, go into the public MLS, look for a one bedroom, one bath in downtown Vancouver under $650,000. Back out anything under 400 square, under 500 square feet, or maybe even under 18 years old, and see what you come up with. You're not gonna have a lot of choice there. Take a look. Plug in the same thing for Kitsilano or Fairview. There's not right now as I speak, not, it's not exactly a buyer's dreamland. For the most part, one bedroom condos right now are in the low end of a seller's market teetering on a high end balance market. So that's what they are. Higher end stuff, it's well into balance and maybe even starting to slip into a buyer's market but not there yet. Detached homes, we are in a buyer's market. Moving forward in 2019, I think it'll probably stay that way. There's some good values out there in the detached market. Will it get better? Maybe, I'm not too sure. We'll see. I am seeing some good homes in Kitsilano, west side of Vancouver, some good Vancouver specials on the east side. If they're priced right, they're getting picked off pretty quick and they're selling pretty close to full asking price but well, probably 5% off or 10% off what they could have gotten a year and a half ago for that same house. So they're on sale. It can turn quick though, you never know. But I think the detached market is gonna to continue to be in a bit of a slump, especially in some of those areas I've talked about, like out in White Rock and that Elgin Chantrell area. Some of the stuff in West Richmond maybe, there seems to be a glut of a lot of these homes priced at 2.5 to 3.5 that market I think could stay pretty sluggish because there just doesn't seem to be any buyer stepping up to buy those type of homes, especially out in that South Surrey area. I don't really follow it, but I kind of keep an eye on it. Nothing is selling out there and every third house is for sale. So that market is in a bit of hurt. Might continue and probably will I think in 2019. Pre-sales are also gonna be interesting, just to wrap it up here. As you guys know, I've talked about it before. There are a lot of luxury towers now approved and ready to go for the West End, for Coal Harbor, downtown Vancouver. These are 30 to 45, 55 story towers, luxury. Some of them are architecturally significant. We're talking $2,000 a square foot and up. Same thing with the huge development going on in Oak Ridge, if you've seen the plans for that. These are not cheap. Those Oak Ridge ones kind of surprised me. I knew they weren't gonna be cheap, but I, uh, many of those are up 2,000 and over a square foot. This will be interesting to see where this goes. I've talked about how these developers, they work with each other, especially for downtown here. So they might do a pre-sale. I'm gonna do my pre-sale in February. Uh, you stay your years out till April so that they're not all competing against each other. That's what they'll do. But there's probably 15 or so downtown and I think you're probably gonna see some uh, delays and some postponement on many of these in 2019. Because I think pre-sales, I blogged about it, it's a tough sell, you got the 5% GST, you've got three, four years before you get the keys on these things from the time you pre-sale them. So much can happen in four years. You're locking in that high $2,000 a square foot price and not getting keys for four years. A lot can happen, dangerous. I would stay away personally, which I've been telling people now for quite a while. That window of pre-sales opens and closes. It's been closed for a few years in my book. It'll reopen again down the road, but for right now, there's just not enough incentive to pay $2,000 a square foot, I don't think, for a unit you're not gonna get the keys on for three and a half or four years. So I think moving forward, I think you're gonna probably see some of these pre-sale developments postponed. Uh, some of them might just be outright canceled, but this is interesting, just finally here, this is kind of the way these cycles go. I've seen this so many times before over my 30 years. And this is what will spur the next leg up. So we might go into a bit of a slow descent here for the next 18 months, let's say, and then maybe it treads water for a year or two. Who knows? I don't know. 
We'll see, and I'll keep you guys posted as we go along. I don't like to take guesses at these things. But what will happen is these pre-sales, not just in downtown Vancouver, but in East Vancouver that are much more affordable, in White Rock, in Surrey, in Richmond, in Burnaby, many of these projects will be put on hold because if there's inventory there for tangible product that's not selling, they'll test the waters with a few of their pre-sales. And I'm he hearing right now that a lot of pre-sales, even the lesser, you know, more affordable ones in the suburbs aren't selling right now. So they're gonna scrap these. So what will happen is you will have no new supply coming in here for a while. And just using, I'm just throwing things out here. Let's say in a couple of years, market starts to turn, the buyer fatigue is gone, which always happens. And people start to slowly come back into the market, which happens and it turns quick. You go from having eight listings and not getting a phone call to all of a sudden my phone rings off the hook and I sell six of them in two weeks. That's how my last couple of turnarounds have gone. It happens fast here, folks. I don't want to get political, but NDP government gets booted out in a couple of years because let's face it, all parties I've told you are all the same. Don't, the government's not your friend, but the NDP government does not instill a lot of confidence in people, in business, in developers, in job growth, if in anything. That's just the way it is. I'm sorry, I don't people are gonna give me a thumbs down on this, but Look what happened 20 years ago. We went from first to last when the NDP government came in. They got booted out three years later and off we went again. So I can tell you, I know firsthand, developers do not like the environment that we're currently in. So they're gonna stay on the sidelines. So the NDP government lasts a few years, let's say, we get a new government in, policies change, taxes change a little bit, the buyers start coming back out, market takes off again, but guess what? Now, because of what's going on now, 2019 and 2020, we have no new housing stock here. And this is the way Vancouver goes. We trickle in supply. As I've always said, we've never been able to keep up with the demand and now we're caught with our pants down. Let's say in 2021, market takes off again and the cavalry's nowhere to be found in East Vancouver and Burnaby and Richmond. To turn the faucet back on now, as you guys know, it's going to take six months to get the project back up on going again, another six months to get the pre-sale, another three years to get it built. You're looking at four more years before the cavalry arrives and we've got a shortage of housing and the market's back off. This is what cycles do. This is what real estate does and this is why I tell people, ignore the short-term volatility here. It's normal. Markets go up. We've had a tremendous bull run here. Markets slow down, buyer fatigue, higher interest rates, government policy, developers stay on the sideline, market goes down for a few years or treads water for a few years. Look at some of these windows coming up too as buying opportunities. I've done many blogs back in 2012 and 2013 when you can buy a good quality unit without competition. Write an offer, let me negotiate the offer for you, write your subject clauses, Back to my videos I've been doing earlier this year. If you've got that, if it's a principal residence and you're gonna need a, a roof over your head and you're gonna keep it, you're gonna do fantastic. If it's an investment property and you're gonna put a tenant in for 10 or 15 or 20 years, you're gonna look back on it as a fantastic uh, uh, purchase. Look for the silver lining in this slowdown. I do, and I'll be blogging about it later this, the, this winter. That's what a lot of my experienced buyers will be doing. The big advantage right now, even if prices don't come off that much, is again, you can negotiate it. You know, this up, up until recently, this past fall, as you guys have been watching my blogs, everything I've had listed in Vancouver, one bedrooms, two bedrooms, were bidding wars, where you're offering 50, 60, 70, 80K over asking. I was seeing one bedroom selling at 100,000 over asking a couple of times here. But everything I was getting offered on or was listing was doing holdbacks. That's over now. So that in itself is a big plus for buyers going forward that have that holding period. I'm Will Big Len. As always, if you haven't joined my YouTube channel, please do. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next week.